Hello everybody, welcome to Noble Weapons third tutorial in the uh, quick and simple tutorial series. In this chapter we're going to be seeing dice sprites, which is an awesome way of displaying uh, big sprites, such as sprites for big scenario elements, background, or even um, big ass bosses that don't normally fit um, in standard sprite sizes. However, the first thing I want to do is uh, show you the importance of having dice sprites and why it's such a useful feature of 2D Toolkit. So first of all I have some scenario elements I want to add uh, to my scenario and the first thing I, I want to do is do like I did on last tutorial which is go to assets create sprite collection okay and I want to add I'm gonna call this let's see scenario and I'm going to add some scenario sprites that I've selected. So for example, I'm going to add this sunken ship and I'm also going to add uh, this background of an underwater, yeah, an underwater background. And I'm also going to add some columns. Okay, that, um, some stalactite and stalagmites and, you know, just underwater scenery. Okay. Um, commit this uh, sprite sheet. And it says unable to fix textures in a re requested atlas area. Okay, there's too many textures in this collection. What this means is it can't fit them in the uh, in a sprite of uh, 1024 by 1024. Um, the the next immediate solution is to go to settings and just pump up the max size to uh, 2048, which is a pretty standard sprite size. And this time the sprite sheet is going to be created and we're going to be able to preview it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, close this, go to tutorial, to scenario data, and in here we can see how the sprites are laid out. Okay, so this is pretty um, suboptimal. Okay, there's lots of unused space over here and over here and right in the middle, and the ship has a lot of unused space around here as well. I'm going to create a uh, small scenario really quickly, so um, create TK2D sprite. Okay, um, the scenario collection, it's already chosen to ship for me. I'm going to take this uh, back a little bit so it um, respects the Z order and there's no uh, confusion as to what is behind and what is in front. I'm going to create another one. Uh, I could also create some, oops, some stalactite. Okay, it's going to be up in the front. Let's see. Now, say once I have all of this set up, I want to add more richness to my scenario and I want to put more sprites. If I add a scenario, um, open the editor and directly add the sprites, I'm going to have a problem. I have a sand dune here, which looks pretty cool, and I also have a um, the red hull of the ship that I can put on top for decoration. If I click commit, it's going to give me the same error as before. Now the easy solution is to just go to settings and pump this up again um, until there's no more pumping. Uh, this is a problem for many reasons. One of them is that um, mobile devices have a maximum texture size of 2048 and this is a problem for them because they can't load them. There's another problem that we're actually avoiding, which is all the wasted space that is in between the sprites. There's a third solution that we could do, which is take uh, the two sprites that aren't fitting and put them in another sprite atlas. But that is another problem because we're taking up a lot more memory and we're also doing a lot more context switching, which means we're switching textures and that is a costly operation. The next step then is to use dicing. And that's what this tutorial is for. So let's go ahead and select all of the sprites. And in the render mesh option, instead of default, uh, select diced. Okay? Because we've selected all of these sprites, you have to click apply. Now what sprite dicing is doing is exactly what you're seeing. It's just splitting the texture into uh, 64, 64 by 64 um, little squares and it's going to discard all of the squares that are fully transparent. 
So as you can see, there's a lot of transparent squares around here and over on the left side. If we go and take a look at the ship, for example, we'll see that there's a lot more squares that are fully transparent, that were a waste of space, and that we're actually discarding. You can, of course, change the uh, size of these uh, squares if you want a, ma a more fine grade control over what you're going to delete. So if, for example, you have um, steep lines like this or this, instead of having um, more uniform vertical lines like these other sprites have, um, you can take this down to 32 by 32 and it'll conform better to the shape of the object if it is very complex and therefore um, eliminate more uh, fully transparent um, parts of the original image, right? Keep in mind that this does increment the amount of uh, quads the game has to render. If we go ahead and click commit it'll take a little while but the spreadsheet is going to be created. Let's take a look at um, how it looks now. If I open the texture you can see that it split the texture into very small pieces that it'll end up piecing together eventually once the uh, the sprite is rendered, but there's a lot more memory that we can use for new sprites. I'm going to go ahead and close this, and this is an automatic process, which is why it's so awesome in 2D Toolkit. All of the sprites I have created now apparently look the same, but if I select one, you can see that it's composed of a lot of small quads that have um, the small pieces that it created before applied to it right and the sum of all the small quads is what makes the full sprite right um, you'll see that all of the textures um, have been diced the same way well as you can see it's a pretty neat feature of 2d toolkit um, I hope you guys learned a lot enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time